say that I would be intentionally, hmm, go ahead. And I'm enjoying it a little bit. I ain't gonna lie, but I'm not gonna let you know that. I'm mad at you. I want you to feel like, you know, this is what it is going on about your business. But the fact I'll that, say I'm I could have been better off, you know, doing something else. And, and so then we we had the conversation. Know, well, I don't want no flapping yeah. fish just yeah. I don't want no wet yeah. fish just yeah. laying yeah. around yeah. flapping. Yeah. You just <laughs> yeah, I mean you just <laughs> and, and it's intentional a lot of the times. We want you to know that we're upset and we want you to receive that. It's not about the fact that we are just not wanting to be intimate with our husbands. The fact is, legitimately wake up in the morning, feed the kids, bathe the kids, clean the house, feed the kids, bathe the kids, clean the house. Like, I, I was doing what I saw on TV. Yeah. Yeah. And I was exhausted. Yes. And by the time I had the other baby, I was pregnant again. I stayed pregnant and didn't know it. <laughs> and y'all legitimately... He would come in ready to rest and relax and I thought, You're okay, ready. let me go ahead and perform because mm -hmm. let me perform in that bedroom real quick. Mm -hmm. Let me do all the things yeah. that I think that a wife is supposed to do right. and I was exhausted. I was able to work and take care of home. Like she didn't, my wife ain't never had to work. She worked because she wanted to work. I mean, that that's that's what's wrong with most men now. It's got to be 50-50. Can I? Well, that's can I that's a whole topic with the 50-50. Can I interject oh, yeah, right? 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 yeah, real I think that gender roles play a huge part in why marriages have issues with finances mm. because... All right. What's up, Brave Arts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of A Scary to Remarry, wanting you to love fearlessly. We have some special guests with us today with Al and Marie. How are you both doing Woo! this wonderful evening? So good. We're so excited oh, to be here with you guys, for sure. Good. Awesome. And can you tell us a little bit about what you have going on and what you're currently doing? Absolutely. So we're bringing back the Love Al and Sugar show. It premieres on Facebook, TikTok, all the things. Y'all come out and see it. Um, we'll be working on relationship stuff and, and being real honest and open about everything. So let's jump into this. I want to talk about the seven year itch. Now, statistically, a lot of marriages usually struggle in that seven year time frame. A lot of times, because you kind of get used to each other and uh, the mundane, the regular in and out of life. So, do you believe that the seven year itch is real? And if so, what can we possibly do to prevent that itch from actually happening? So, you want to go first? I well, I'm gonna go yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, go ahead. <laughs> to me, to me is if you can make it through the first year. Mm. I don't know about the seven year. Mm. By seven years, you should be accustomed to each other and you would think know that. how each other working and all of that. But some people, they don't have that kind of connection. So um, I, I basically think if you make it through the first year, then you'll be successful because. That was the hardest year for us. Yeah, what, now, right, let's yeah. talk about. Okay, I thought that was yeah, a little struggle. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, I, I, we actually disagree a little bit. Okay. Um, okay. We agree and disagree, okay. which is why I'm glad. I'm so glad that you guys are doing this organically, so that <laughs> you know the answers can be for real. We haven't had a chance to rehearse and get on the same page. That's real. That's real. Um, yeah. I, I don't know that it was seven years, but. I will agree with Al wholeheartedly in that first year being extremely hard. Mm -hmm. And it's because mm -hmm. for us, we didn't have examples of how to do it, not positive examples of mm -hmm. how to do it. So, so many of us. that first year, we exhausted everything. Like he would go to work while he was at work. I was pregnant with one baby, um, had one baby, mm -hmm. like first time in the house with like in a, in a family setting. Yeah. And I would legitimately wake up in the morning, feed the kids, bathe the kids, clean the house, feed the kids, bathe the kids, clean the house. Like I, I was doing what I saw on TV. Yeah. yeah. And I was exhausted. Yes. And by the time I had the other baby, I was pregnant again. I stayed pregnant and didn't know it. <laughs> and y'all legitimately, he would come in ready to rest and relax. And I thought, You're okay, ready. let me go ahead and perform. Because mm -hmm. let me perform in that bedroom real quick. Mm -hmm. Let me do all the things yeah. that I think that a wife is supposed to do. Right. And I was exhausted. Mm -hmm. So it definitely was hard for us that first year just learning how to let go some. Laying, it's okay if he washes the dishes tonight because I've been with the kids yeah. all day and yeah. accepting that from him. Mm -hmm. But by maybe seven years, eight years, Wait ten a minute years. Wait before you go okay. to seven Go ahead, years. go ahead, go ahead. Because 
bagged up to that part, exhausted. I, I walked in one day like, what, what is going on here? Why are you constantly doing this same thing over and over and over again? Mm -hmm. Like if you're tired, when these kids are asleep, take a nap when they take a nap. Mm -hmm. So you don't wear yourself out. Mm -hmm. I can feed myself sometimes. <laughs> Yeah. I was wearing I, I a bath water. He was like, in his bath water. Was I don't spraying. need oh, all that. Right. Right. I was like, I wanted to be all yeah. of the wife I could be for him, and I was. Where did you? I appreciated it, course. but I didn't. I didn't need it all of that. It was overboard. What? Where did you learn that idea of what a wife was supposed to look at? The Cosby Show. <laughs> Sorry. The Cosby Show. That same thing. I was like, <laughs> I wanted to be Felicia Rashad. Yeah. Yes. Let me just bam oh, all the things, all the things that I hear that wives say they do for their husbands and their husbands appreciate let me do all of those things and we just we didn't know what we were doing and might I add we were both very young mm -hmm. and dare I say it naive mm -hmm. and um Al used to be a booty hole <laughs> like he was really sweet to me most of the time but am I lying like no. he's going into a really good man but he was a jerk sometimes and I would be like I just did all of this and I'm sorry <laughs> Yeah. And then when he, when the jerk said, <laughs> cool out, I got it some, I was like, I am doing too much. Like, this is unreal. Because I, I don't like to see you cry. Aww. You know that. Yeah. 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 A jerk or not, he has yeah. never been able to tolerate me. Yeah. No. no. Yeah. So. I had a similar experience when we first got married. I felt like, because I saw my mom do that. She was super woman. She cooked, clean, took care of us. And I was trying to, you know, emulate those same qualities. And I realized by year one or two that I could not do it. And it's impossible. It's impossible. And I'm so thankful to Sean. He does laundry. He washes <laughs> dishes. Like he saw, he was like, oh, she's worn out. And it's coming out on me later because I'm irritable and overstimulated mm -hmm. and stuff. So, yeah, thank you for being open and honest about yeah. that. Because a lot of women think we're supposed, you know, are supposed to be super women and do everything all the time. And it's like legit impossible. Mm -hmm. No, it's... We, I know it was impossible. When I walked in and I seen her laid out on the couch, I'm like, what did you do today? <laughs> I thought you probably went on a 10-mile jog or something like that. I'm You're like, tired? Yeah. yeah, I'm exhausted. like, stop but doing this. Those like, kids, they don't wear you out. Listen, they something on the floor, I was mopping it. Mopping the whole floor. <laughs> like crazy stuff yeah. because I just wanted it to be, to be successful. Yeah, clean. Because I didn't see together it. Together for him. Yeah. yeah. But it, it was the thing about teamwork. Like, when you tired, I can come in and deal with the kids. I normally come in anyways and try to help deal with the kids in the evenings. He and, wear them up. Yeah. I have a little dad, and you know, dad's going to run and play with yeah, him, scream yeah. and holler, and you like, no, I just got them quiet, sleep. bro. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it tastes it off of, off of you where you can sit back and not have to and, deal with them so much, even though we have to clean up everything after we done, yeah. we done wrecked it. Uh -uh. Because then I'm cleaning it up after they done wrecked it. Most of the time. <laughs> or if I hear it, the child. 80% of the time. Yeah, because he can listen to the kids cry. I can't hear the kids cry. Mm -hmm. Like, it is overstimulating for me. Like, he'll, he'll sit there and let, you know, the boy. He's like, he's fine. He's a boy. He's bad. He's right. You know? And I'm just like, he's crying. And I'm always at it. Stop making him cry. Let me just hold him a little bit longer. He's like, go take a shower. And I'm like, but I have to calm him down first and make sure he's good. And he's like, no, he's fine. And I'm like, but I can't hear him crying in the shower because then I'm going to make sure, you know, I have to make sure he's good all the time. So, yes, that I'm. I don't know why we're like that. I think it like triggers something in us to hear our children just constantly crying. Well, yeah, and and they don't. I mean, they're guys. Yeah. So they are right. quick to yeah. tune it out. Yeah. Me, however, if I hear somebody, go, oh, I'm like, what was yeah. that? And they're like, there ain't nobody crying. Anymore. <laughs> but by the time I, I really feel like by the time we made it well into our marriage, um, we became complacent and comfortable. You come in. You know, you, status routine. quo mm -hmm. all the time. Status quo, status quo, status quo. Mm -hmm. And eventually, there's some a little resentment or something that'll build up. And it's like, I keep doing this over and over again. And now you're not acknowledging it anymore. But that's because you're used to seeing it every day. Now, if it's not done this way, you yeah, actually have something negative to say and i'm like dang that's <laughs> that's messed up like it about expectations yeah that's the, another question that we actually have for you guys yeah uh, how do you feel about expectations in the in the marriage you should have expectations out of each other 
Okay. You you should definitely be accountable for your actions and the way that you talk to your mate and stuff like that. We definitely like have expectations. We, we, yeah, we, we have expectations of each other. It's just like with most people in marriage, it's forced. It's like you got to have these expectations. Mm -hmm. Now, we learn to sit down and talk about things and work through things. Mm -hmm. So we okay. so okay. Mm -hmm. the expectations can be reached mm -hmm. because most people that set a lot of expectations in marriage it, it fails mm -hmm. because, yeah, because it's, the expectations it's not are not work. attainable. It's not organic. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they're not attainable though. Yeah. And nobody has talked about them. I expect for you to. My guy brings me flowers all the time. They're beautiful. I anticipate them. Mm. So. If it's not happening, I'm like, well, you what know, happened? what's wrong? But he understands that that's my love language because we've discussed that that's an expectation. The beautiful thing is that that's his love language also. So when he brings me flowers, it's because I was thinking about you today. You know, let me just give that to you. But yeah. honestly, if you don't communicate the expectations you have, then they're one-sided and you can't be offended when the other person is not meeting those expectations because you've never discussed them. So you don't know if they're even obtainable for both people. I can have an expectation for him to roll with me 10 miles every day. Bro got a bad back. Well, actually, he, he, he could run. I could not. But um, but if I'm expecting that and I'm never communicating that and I'm getting up, I'm going out running every day and then I'm mad because you never do it with me. Well, you never told me that that's something that you needed. You never told me that that was a desire of yours. Mm -hmm. You know, and if it's something that he can't do, then where's the compromise? Mm -hmm. Well, I expect for you to do that, but it's not something that's obtainable. So... Instead of doing that, I'm like, let's find something else that we can meet in the middle with. Yeah, yeah, because I, I I usually say that um, you can't hold someone accountable for the conversation you never had. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think that is important. I do kind of differ though on the expectation thing. Yes. Okay. Okay, and I've learned this over time. Um, you talked about the roses, right? Mm -hmm. I think when you have expect, should you discuss them? Of course. But for me, I learned over time is just to be grateful for whatever I get. And what I'm what I'm saying is, if she makes me breakfast, I'm like, thank you. Like I'm grateful for anything she does because she don't have to do it, even though right. I'm married. So I, I look at it a little different. It keeps me in the uh, the the grateful stage. So you don't have any expectations. I'm lowering those expectations. I'm I'm I'm, I'm taking away those expectations. Okay. Yeah, I'm taking away the expectations because the, the scary thing about expectations is if you have an off month, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. you're ready to get divorced. Wait a minute, but the, I that's, that's the... That's the <laughs> okay, well, I, I, ain't, I ain't trying to talk about it. No, no, let's talk about it. This is why we, well, that's why we wrap it. You should, when you marry, you have these expectations, you know this is, you know, I expect certain things, she expects certain things. But it's just like um, lately, I've been working like two months straight. Mm -hmm. We haven't went on a bunch of dates. Um, normally on Fridays, I come in and I cook, even if I work. I come in and say, no, nah, you ain't cooking today. Mm -hmm. Fridays, that's my day to cook. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make steak and potatoes or mm -hmm. whatever. Usually yeah. steak and potatoes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Usually <laughs> steak and potato potatoes. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> on that Every Friday. But hey, that's what's up. I haven't lately, and she haven't pressed me about that because she know I've been working. Even I'm just using that one thing and as, as an example because yeah. even if I miss the mark on what consciously we saying these are the expectations, she's not sitting here bitter about it all. But I haven't bought roses in a while because I've been working a lot and just coming in 12, 15 hours, six days a week. Mm -hmm. It don't change her perspective of me because she looking like he's working a lot. I'm not going to pressure him about that because I know he can't do all of this. And then you get off of work after the store closed. Of course, he's not going to get flowers that day. Yeah. But I am going to let her know, like, I didn't get you flowers, but they coming. So it sounds like you have ex expectations that are necessary, but you give grace. Absolutely. Oh, okay. you, you got that to. That is the word that I was okay. waiting to. Oh, let him let him finish, but that was the word that, because I feel like if you go to work for 40 hours, right, mm -hmm. 
at the end of that week, you expect to get paid. Mm -hmm. You expect to get paid. Mm -hmm. There is no grace for it. Mm -hmm. Yo, your employer can't come to you and say, Sean, I know you work these 40 weeks, bro, but I'm tired. I'm <laughs> you know what? No, I expect to be paid. Yeah. The expectations are how we keep structure in our lives. Mm -hmm. And if you lower the expectations, then to me, what it says is I'm lowering my confidence that you'll be able to meet them. Mm -hmm. that's, ooh, that's good. But, but that's good. Here, here's your number. Ah, that's good. good. Yeah. I, that's good. I, yeah, because yeah, me and him have different weeks. We, I see yeah. it more like y'all do, and he sees it like, and this is new that he's been kind of so. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah, because I, I do think. You have to be conscious enough to say to get that great. He's he's been working mm -hmm. because right. a lot of people live life on autopilot. Mm -hmm. Statistically, there was a study done: three thousand couples, and ninety six percent of those couples said they were on autopilot, which means that I, I'm I'm really conscious of what goes on in this household. I'm just I put on my shoes, I go to work. You know, we just live this life just mm -hmm. every day. And we do it unconscious to where if you don't get those roses, you like, wait, wait, where's my roses? Because you've been trained to get those roses. So right. the time you have that that off week or whatever like that, it's like, where's my roses? Yeah. But here go another thing though. God has expectations for us in the marriage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if God give us grace, why are we giving each other grace? In the same That's respect right. when right. we got so much going on and right. things are not going the way that we expect mm -hmm. for them to go. Because sometimes in marriage, when you said expectations, they, they decide. Yeah, right. Especially they, at the they, beginning. Yeah. Especially yeah. 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 It's it's this high. Yeah. But where's the room for you to have to wow. fall wow. and get off yeah. of that mm -hmm. roll of expectations? Yeah. But if God give us grace. Why are we not giving that grace to each other? Yeah. And, and to with that, if your expectations are this high, like I expect to be taken out all the time. I expect mm -hmm. to be loved. I expect to be, some of the expectations are unrealistic. Right. You can't expect things that don't make sense. But what happens when you have one set of expectations and then you have a family and so those expectations need to change? Yeah. It's not yeah. a problem if you need to make a modification to That's them. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. So that you can, that ties into that grace too. There's not a problem if you need to make a modification. The problem is if you say, I was here, but clearly you can't do that, so let me drop it down here. No. What's prohibiting you from mm -hmm. getting up to here? Mm -hmm. And my role mm -hmm. is to make sure that I can get you where you need to be mm -hmm. so that I can get what I need from the relationship Ooh. and you can get where I yeah, need to be so that you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, that's real. It's, 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 a, it's, it's a gamble with, with setting a lot of these hard expectations in marriage. Yeah. And that's what killed a lot of relationships. They expect the lavish things all the time. It's going to come a point in time in your relationship where you won't be able to give those lavish things. Yeah. It's times I done, we done been in them situations where at least I can bring you home a flower. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ain't flower. Okay yeah, flower. Yeah. Ain't okay flower. Because the thought was there. Yeah. yeah. The, yeah. Thought, the, yeah. the thought is bigger than the bouquet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. Because in the book of Ecclesiastes, there is talking about a time and a season for everything. Right? Exactly. So, which means things will vacillate sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, I, I get that. That's good. Yeah, that's a show within itself. I'm, I'm going <laughs> to move on because I will we'll be here all night. <laughs> Let's talk about, this is a hot topic. How do you feel about sleeping in separate bedrooms? Real quick, Cameron Diaz talking about it. A lot of people, you know, Hollywood, people start talking about it. And in the comment section, people are like, yeah, I've been sleeping in my own room for three years now. How, how do you feel about that? Nah, ain't gonna happen. No. I don't care how mad we are with each other. Mm -hmm. it, it ain't gonna happen. Can I, can, can we have happen? never yeah. been to where I was like, you sleep on the couch. You know how you see on TV? Yeah, they sleep on the couch. Sleep on the couch. Sleep on the couch. Yeah. yeah. But there no, has been a time the where... No, yeah, there has been a time where a homeboy was drunk and I legit <laughs> kicked him out the bed. Like, for real, kicked him out the bed. Like, I kicked him on the floor and out the bed because I did not want him in the bed with me. I have a very, very close friend um, who spent some time sleeping in a separate room from her significant other... Then they went back to the room together. I'm not sure what that situation is, no. but um, she 
they slept in separate rooms because um, he would snore real loud yeah. and they were just really uncomfortable and stuff like that. For me, I you and I can do anything together, Clarissa. We can go hang out. We can if I see you, I ain't seen you in a while. Mm -hmm. Get yes. a little sugar. But we ain't finna rumble in the jungle. That's, <laughs> that's something I only share with him. Right. And there's a certain right. level of intimacy <laughs> that comes from sleeping in the bed together. Yeah. When, if I'm cold, mm -hmm. my feet are going right on his legs and he don't have a problem with it. If I can't sleep, I have a bad dream, I'm not finna get up to go and look for him in another room. Oh, okay. I need him right oh, here okay. with me. Sense. But I think that, I that. Yeah. we can't. We, we all need to be careful of projection. Mm -hmm. So we can't project what we want in our relationship onto somebody else. Absolutely. So for some people, I didn't judge my friend when she told me that they were sleeping in separate rooms. I understood her plight mm -hmm. because she's having a hard time. Like they, they're, she, 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 she can't said, sleep, it, you can't it, rest. It, it couldn't be me. <laughs> hey. You do what you do. Put a machine on or something, or whatever. <laughs> what what I'm, I'm, I'm sleeping in my bed. What if I went to another room? I'm gonna come in that room. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we were on a wine tour last weekend, and we met an older couple, mm -hmm. and they were in their sixties. And she told me for like the last couple of years. years, she said they've actually been sleeping in separate it's bedrooms. And so Sean and I were talking about it, and I told him I I don't prefer. And they're like thriving. They're fine. Yeah. Like it's helping their marriage. Like she said, it's really good for them. Yeah. And she said, well, we need to connect. We connect. And then I said, back yeah, she said she sent right back to his room. Yeah, she was like, we well, do what we gotta do. Oh, Sixty three, sixties. You know, and so they down fools. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, okay, they, they, yeah, because I don't know if they can watch this video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's fools. We, we did, we, we talked about it, and he yeah. asked. He was like, "Would you want us to sleep in separate rooms? Because you know we have our issues every now and then. We be arguing, and we like, I don't want to sleep next to you tonight." But I told him, I don't know if I would want to have separate rooms, but I do think it's um, necessary to have your own spaces. Um, like, you know, you have your man cave and then I can have my she shed or, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Especially if you're able to have those, like having your separate spaces so, or like I have my prayer closet right now. That's my space. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? That I can go and connect with God and like, it's my area that nobody else gets to touch and do anything. Yeah, with. absolutely. And then he has his, the room where he has his uh, stuff set up for the YouTube channel. So that's his space, you know? And I think having your individual spaces is definitely necessary. So you can have that individuality and have somewhere where you can go and like, just reconnect with yourself because the whole world is overwhelming. But sleeping in separate rooms, I don't think I could. And I mean, I know people who have separate houses. Like, it's that true. <laughs> yeah, I actually but they're married. I, 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 I don't judge like them. them. I don't judge them. <laughs> them. But like, that's that's your thing. Yeah, it, their their relationship is thriving. No, they work. They connect when they need to connect. They're going to, you know, they out here doing their thing. When I, they because, have let, 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 Go ahead, let, say your opinion. I'm, I'm here for it. I don't want to offend nobody. <laughs> It's not if if you're doing all of this and it's thriving, it's not a relationship. It's a business partnership. That's that's what I call marriages like that where everything is so separated. We're we're not together because we like each other. We're together because it's beneficial for mm -hmm. both of us to be together. And when we want to connect with somebody. Then we hook up. It's no different than them being single. Mm. It's it's a business relationship. Well, you know, back in the day, before the Great Depression and stuff, people slept in not necessarily separate bedrooms, but they didn't even sleep in the same bed with each other. They slept yeah. in separate beds. But I remember um, I love Lucy. I don't know more yeah, about them. economically, it got so bad that people started sleeping in a bed together. Mm -hmm. That's where it was. Three, four people, brothers, siblings, cousins, everybody sleeping in the bed together it's because we had to. Mm -hmm. um, and now people are getting in a better position and they're like, well, maybe I don't. Because there's been times where we were beefing, like you said, I don't want you in the bed next to me. So I literally, and he will follow me in the bed. I'm literally scooting over and he's scooting over and I'm scooting over. And I got this much bed left and I'm hanging on the side trying to keep you from getting get back up, bro. Like, yeah. get out nope. of my space. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not feeling really right now, so don't be scooching up to me. This yeah. ain't no fine. makeup time. No. That's fine. Yeah. That's I'm fine. like, move That's over, but he gonna move over and stay in that bed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sleeping in my bed. Sean told me that very day yeah. that I don't do couches. I said, okay. He oh. told me that at the beginning of our relationship. That was what it, like, yeah. when we were setting boundaries, that I do not do kids in the bed and I do not do couches. I was like, okay. I, I actually... <laughs> 
once I was so mad at Al, I got my pillow and my cup and I was like, I'm sleeping on the couch. And I came to night, I jerked it off to sleep and all of a sudden I feel pressure and I look up and homeboy is getting on the couch with me. And I was like, we might as well go and get back in bed. That way I can at least have some space. But yeah, when he says he wants to sleep with, even when we renewed our vows, we was like, okay, we won't see each other for tonight. You go over here, okay. I'll go here. Mm -mm. <laughs> he couldn't even sleep. He couldn't sleep. I was Aww. like, <laughs> I'm not sleep apnea. I'm up in this room with this nut. Mike, Mike ain't finna let me down here. <laughs> <laughs> My wife had that senses like, yeah, she hear me gasping for her. Yeah. She waking me up, mm -hmm. nudging me. Yeah. Like, nah, bro, I ain't. Nah. Yeah. First and last. Yeah, that's that connection. That's y'all. Y'all so knitted. Y'all knitted together. That's, that's beautiful. Yeah. You, yeah. Yeah. You can you can understand when they off mm -hmm. just from sleep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's, that's yeah. That's yeah. that. That's that oneness. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is this is not my question. This is not in the question. So we're gonna talk okay. about it. Anyway. <laughs> um, schedule sex or unscheduled sex? Ooh. Combo. Oh. Combo. Uh huh. Okay. okay. Let's talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. First of all, let me get Sometimes it's schedule without being yeah. scheduled. Because yeah. you, there's plenty of times we'd be like, tonight, meet me in the room, 7 p.m. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's schedule. That's schedule. That's schedule. Yeah, right? stuff like that. I'm, I'm cool with stuff like that. Not, okay. not that weekly, like it's Wednesday. It's time to go. Wednesday. 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 Wednesday says, uh, what, what show Queen. was that we was watching? Queen uh, Charlotte. Yeah. Well, Wednesday was there. Oh, okay. Like it's it's yeah. Wednesday. It's yeah. time to oh, I haven't watched that show. No. Yeah. But one of us is way more comfortable with talking about sex than the other one. Uh, I will tell uh, you uh, way more information than you need to know. I will tell you everything because I feel like sex is so important in a relationship. Because, like I said, we can chill. We can do everything. But when it comes to... That I, that is a blessing for me, and why I would never want to be with another body because he knows every single part. I can tell him. Let me keep it PG thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, mean, I I don't have to say no there yeah, there yeah. no no no. I you. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. like yeah. like, yeah, pull it, twist it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And y'all really yeah. like yeah. that part. Twenty five years. Yeah, we've been together almost twenty five so years. Twenty five years. Yeah, people yes. don't make it that long anymore. So y'all, you have literally learned each other mm -hmm. in this entire. And we grow with it. We we will do. Let me not. You know. But we will go to the store and pick out new gadgets and yeah. gizmos and odds and yeah. ends. And what was that, a week or so ago, I told Al, I need to go out with my boyfriend. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I love you as my husband, but I need my man. Like, yeah. I need to go out with my boyfriend. Yeah. And it's completely my different personas. Yeah. It's completely <laughs> different personas. Usually, he is Albert. He is little Al. He is my husband. Yeah. When we go out, who are you? Ill Noah. Ill Noah. Oh! Listen. Oh, I love you. Yeah, I love you. Ill Noah is nasty. Oh, I love it. And I like, so it's switching it up for us. So do we schedule it? I love it? that. Yeah, no, for real. Yeah. We schedule it. I just absolutely. told her one day, but, like, nah, oh, you want to do boyfriend, girlfriend? Okay. <laughs> I'm Ill Noah's name. Yeah. And the whole demeanor it. changes. And Ill Noah's is just like, Nasty. The young man. That's what's up. The young man. The name for service. I'm here for it. Yeah. But yeah. scheduled and unscheduled. We okay. will definitely make plans to do certain things. We're really big on staycations. Yes. And that's so we can get out of the house, away from the kids, yeah. and not have to turn the TV up real loud. So oh, that's we true. tell them. Come on now. Lock the door. Lock the door and turn the TV up. Is everybody sleep? Right? <laughs> Ain't no kids. No, my house. No, all we tell them, I hey, know. call your friends, find out who house you're going to. <laughs> Nobody here this weekend. And it's, mm -hmm. you get to be so, it's so freeing mm -hmm. to know that it's just the two of you. Okay. But yeah. things like that are scheduled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But as far as that weekly routine kind of thing, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's no, that's any time, any place, anywhere. <laughs> that's the whole Janet, that's the whole Janet vibe right there. What, what about y'all though? Do y'all feel like it should be scheduled? I, 
I believe the same thing as you. Like, I we are so busy with the children. Mm -hmm. Like, we have to schedule it. Yeah, um, we, schedule, we schedule. We have to schedule yeah. it because, <laughs> like, uh, we gotta make sure the kids are down for bed. We have to make sure mm -hmm. no one's gonna be walking in our room. Uh, and if I do get a chance where we get to go get a staycation or get somewhere, else, you know, like. We, we have to schedule it for no, us. Schedule but I think as the children begin to get, because, you know, we have a nine, a five, and a three-year-old in the mm -hmm. house. Like, it's very, those kids run our life <laughs> right now. And so I think as they begin to get older, then we can go back to, like, just... Can I ask you a question? Nah. What happens if you wake up and how graphic can I? No, keep it. Let, 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 let's, yeah, let's, let's disclaim it real quick. <laughs> All the Brave Arts community know we keep it a thou wow. We keep it a thou wow. <laughs> you no, know, because because people because marriages, uh, to, especially with Christians, right? Two things we don't talk about is sex and money when we mm. get both. Yeah. Oh, I'm. I can't not wait. Oh, we no. plan on on a little right. Alan Sugar show talking about the difference between sex and intimacy. Mm, Big that's difference. a good. It's a because big difference. people think that if you're being intimate with somebody, you're being sexual with them, and that mm, is not so always the case. Sometimes, as a friend. I need to be intimate with you as mm -hmm. my friend and it ain't got nothing to do with us taking mm -hmm. our clothes off. Mm -hmm. And I, he is my friend and so sometimes I need to be intimate with him and it has nothing to do with sex. Yes. But I will say, what happens if you wake up in your panties <laughs> you keep it uh, you, I mean, keep for real. But you done woke up in your leg is wet, and you, so you're going to tell them that. Locked out of this room. Listen, lock the hey, door. Get out. Go find your stay toy out. to play with. Matter of fact, you stay, you stay here. You stay here. I'll get the kids straight. But you know what? Yes, he's getting the kids. Right. Like, hey, no, y'all good. Your mom in a good mood. But, here right. here y'all are moving. Don't talk to me. Don't talk to me for about an hour. <laughs> talk to me after the movie over. No, no, no. You got till the movie goes out. Then y'all yeah. can come and see mom and daddy. But yeah. why would a woman want that kind of spontaneous intimacy? It starts for us well before yes. the sex starts. Yes. Yeah. It starts with us on Monday when you brought me those flowers out of nowhere. Tuesday when you folded the laundry and you said that you knew I was tired so you ran me a bath. Wednesday when I just did a little bit of something different to my hair and you was all up on me and you told me how beautiful I was. And and Thursday when I was didn't feel like cooking and you just brought dinner home because you listened to something I said on the phone. You heard the distress. And when you do that to a woman, you feed her. And the more that you feed her that, the more that she wants to be intimate with you. And the more that you Maria, structure tell that. Them, tell them, tell them. You got yeah. to tell them. Yeah, they should be telling them. They got to like, hear this. No, Folks, for real. The this. more that you structure that, legitimately, the nastier she will be. Because men receive. No, she going to go. <laughs> she going to go. You men, got to know what you're doing. Men receive that. <laughs> Know that you love him, they they like nasty stuff. They nasty. 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 So, but nasty. I don't want to give that to you because I know that that's where you're coming from. I know that that's what you get from it, right? So I'm not wanting to give you all of this if you haven't stimulated me mm -hmm. at all. I'm giving I'm you the same all. dry here, gone head, bam. Mm -hmm. You done yet, or mm -hmm. you, you know what is it? True. Mm -hmm. it's, now, so, I'm gonna text you in the morning. <laughs> First thing in the morning, I got a routine. The guy no, still wake up. Hello, beautiful. Wait. You know how them creeps come in your DMs? Like, good, good morning, morning beautiful. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. I'll be an inbox. Brand right. Brand inbox right. Text message. Hey, I'm letting you know. I'm after you. Because I do a good <laughs> job. 25 I, years. Yeah, that's and I real. intentionally do a good job. I'm, I'm going to put it down, but that's if I've been stimulated. Mm -hmm. And if I have not been, mm -hmm. because he's been working a lot, there's been times where he just knocked out and tired. Of course. Understand that, and I'm going to give him that grace. There's no expectation <laughs> there because he needs that grace. But, but, mm -hmm. when the time suits. Nah, you like, hey, bro, I know you tired, but, uh, <laughs> you know, you need to come on. <laughs> now, now, let me ask I you. I got you. Now, let me ask you this, because this is one of my favorite topics, right? I'm talking about <laughs> right? Mary, right? <laughs> have you always been in that place, or did you have to work to get to that That's place? That's a good question. What and is, did you have the conversation sex? with sex? Absolutely. Oh, we, we talk about it. We talk about it. We have okay. conversations. You talk about I'll monitor your relationship. She'll talk about it and I'll test it. Okay. She'll talk about it and I'll test it. Let me. 
Because sometimes I have to process okay. so I don't mm -hmm. say the wrong mm -hmm. stupid mess. A Especially lot, when you're talking I, about A lot of y'all guys say a lot of stupid stuff. You need to it process. It comes off wrong. Yeah. It comes off wrong. So Especially I gotta when you think talk about, about intimacy. It. And we talk about yeah. our bodies and yes. our everything. But we've had yeah. conversations where he's like, look, I need more of this. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. cool. But I'm not giving you more of this because you're not giving me this. And this is what I need. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about the things that we need outside of the bedroom, yes, yes. then we can bring it into the bedroom. And and FYI, mm -hmm. we have had conversations while we were having sex. Huh. There is nothing more thrilling than having a conversation while you're having sex. You know what I know? I keep, people be like, I, I know that you like doing that little... I don't like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I see you doing that. And I know you're working real hard at it, but homie, that's, that's not doing it. How about you do it this way? Okay. And then it's the same is reciprocated. You know, baby, I don't know, maybe if you should. Okay. How cool. long into y'all's relationship did you feel like y'all really got as one no, in the bedroom? Yeah. Do was it from like the jump, like y'all just you know it started off like that, or do you feel like it took some years for y'all to really get it together to where y'all were in sync? Because y'all have this flow, and you it's natural, like y'all have yeah. this flow, and y'all are just flowing together. Like when do you feel like y'all got in sync? I guess you could when do you think? Because I, I I wonder if we agree. Okay, over years, yeah, it take years because the older a person get, the more their um. Ideas of expectations and sex changes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it don't take all night to <laughs> look. When some of y'all are doing in, doing in three, doing four day. hours, I can get that job done in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> you got to know what you're doing. You ain't, you ain't got to. Lie. You ain't got to be all night. Yeah. No, you ain't got to be all night. Yeah. That was times, especially when we were young. Literally, literally, and y'all said I, I can keep it a buck. Sweat we like, sweat like, sweat sweat like, like two, two boxes in the ring. Be so We're tired. To get there. Listen, it used to be when it was so tired. The next day I'm like, oh, I can't even. Eat. Like this just yeah. went on for a really long time mm -hmm. for us to get there. Mm -hmm. And but then when we decided to have those conversations. It was like, look, because he, he keeps doing that one, his signature moves. <laughs> his signature, his finish, finish It's move. never done it for me. But when <laughs> we were comfortable <laughs> enough to have that conversation, mm -hmm. now now that you're doing that one thing I really like, guess what? We done went from 20 minutes of you doing that signature move that ain't doing nothing. So I just even a thought that you cared enough to do something that I really enjoy is turning me on more. So, I think he is absolutely right. I think in the beginning, we had great fun sex, but... All the, day, all night, uh, shit. And, and, That's a... <laughs> but, but was it like that? So, was it like that in the beginning, though? Yes. It was just like that, because y'all so, were no, younger. I mean, we were younger, yeah, we were doing it all. <laughs> we got four kids, and they real close in age. <laughs> so, we were doing it all the time, and I was always wanting to, you know spruce it up a little bit more unfortunately we've been very organic in that but there i i can't say that it's always been times where i was like ooh, gun ho like there's been times where i just was mad at him i wasn't feeling him and i'm like okay i know you got what you need just intentionally though let me just say that i would be intentionally hmm go ahead and I'm enjoying it a little bit, ain't gonna lie, but I'm not going to let you know that. I'm mad at you. I want you to feel like, you know, this is what it is going on about your business. But the fact I'll that, say I'm, I could have been better off, you know, doing something else. And, and so then we, we had the conversation, no, well, with it, I don't want no flapping fish just, <laughs> yeah, I don't want no wet yeah, fish just yeah, laying yeah, around yeah, flapping. Yeah, you just, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you just. <laughs> and, and it's intentional a lot of the times. We want you to know that we're upset and we want you to receive that. It's not about the fact that we are just not wanting to be intimate with our husbands. The fact is, I want you to read my body language and you can't. You're like, well, what, what's up? Like, clearly something is off. Mm -hmm. And men are going to probably finish anyway. Oh, yeah. Because they, men. Yes, oh, like, oh, well, maybe oh, not, though. Because sometimes, well, yeah, nah, yeah, sometimes, yeah, sometimes you just like. 97% of the time, 97% of the time in that situation, I'm going to finish. <laughs> I'm just keeping a book. You let me got in here. You let me got in here. 
Okay, if you mad, be mad. After this. After this. We'll deal with it afterwards. You want to you wanna lay it out, but I got to get this one. <laughs> right. Now, the other three percent, I'm like, nah, this don't even feel right. I don't need get over them. But now that, now that we have had legitimately y'all I, I all of y'all i can't urge it enough to have those conversations because it makes such a difference it's it so makes it powerful. fun yes. yes and it makes it you get change and yeah you get each other each other's actual point of views of it, it ain't uh you ain't hurting each other nothing like this having good dialect it's the that's intimacy. what made the sex it's great the intimacy is included in the sex yeah that changes it because there's been times where I was just crying because it was just so beautiful. Like, and, and no joke, no joke. Yeah. I mean, oh, that's because of the though. intimacy. Yeah. Don't, don't make it seem that like... <laughs> <laughs> no, but for real. Like, it's, it's so... Me. Like, I, I feel the love for my husband mm. during intimate sex. Yeah. And so it it, it it makes me full, you know? And I've been emotional about it. Like, I really do love him. Like, oh. this is good. He's doing everything it's right. Like love. Yeah. 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 It's a difference, it right? I do. I yeah. think there's a difference between just having sex and making love. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, over, it's over time. It's a, it's a build-up. Nobody's going to get it right. That That's why so many people go out and do the wrong things because they... They not communicating with each other. What you you don't know what your spouse is thinking in their head. What why you sitting here thinking one thing about sex? They thinking something too about sex. Mm. So both of y'all sitting here talking to each other and bringing those ideas and those fantasies and all that stuff together and put it together. Mm. Man, Fourth of July don't have nothing <laughs> on you. Yeah, it, it makes a it makes a big difference. It does. That so I, I think that's, you know, that's definitely important. But for us, like now, I really feel like we're blessed. I feel like God blesses our sexual intimacy because it is better. Than, like, it just keeps it better. And I really feel like God was like, okay, y'all hung in there. So let me bless you in this way. And I've prayed. I don't, I've prayed about sex in my marriage. You I should. I do too. You should, you should. Cause God created it. I, I think. I think a lot of times we get off track to think that the, the devil just perverted sex. Uh -huh. God created sex. I, it, people. Yeah. People separate it. It's like God has nothing to do with sex. It's like no, but he does. He does. You know what I'm saying? And through marriage, right? So I oh, think yeah. a lot of times we just we might have had bad experiences. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So by right. the time we do get married, we like I don't see. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, so it just depends because you talk about the communication and talking about it, and I, that's why I think it's important because you gotta have the communication. That, no, I don't see it like this. So I see it like that. Oh, okay, and I'll see why you might struggle with this. You might not because yeah, because even like with orgasms, there's a lot of women. A lot of women don't have orgasms just because they never had the conversation with who they were with. And even statistically, a lot of women don't have orgasms because they don't trust the man that they're with. You you this. And themselves. It's, it's yeah. very, it's, it's crazy that you said that because I read something not too long ago. Like, I forget the percentage mm -hmm. of the women that's married that don't have orgasms. Have orgasms. <laughs> because if they're not having orgasms, because they're not turned on. Mm -hmm. Like, that's when you got to have, that's, despite of what you went through with your other relationship, you're in this new marriage. With this person, you need to sit down and communicate that to them why you can't get yep. to uh, having an orgasm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think a lot of women don't know their bodies, too. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's something that, you know, a lot of women don't explore enough and, you know, how to <laughs> have orgasm, like what turns them on enough to get them yeah. to get to, you know, have an orgasm, the climax completely and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if they're not with the right partner, then you're you know like that comfortable you're not comfortable mm -hmm. enough to because if we keeping it a buck that's not a nobody's doing this <laughs> like, you know what I mean like you're looking crazy your body is doing if you're doing it right you're looking crazy and you have to be comfortable enough with the person that you're with to let them know that you know 
With you making me look like I have balls, pal Bell's palsy is a good thing. <laughs> yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. So you have to be comfortable. So mm -hmm. nurturing that relationship outside of the bedroom, I think, does it good yeah, for sure. Yes, for sure. I, yeah, I can stay on that topic forever. <laughs> uh, what are your communication? What are your communication styles, and how, uh, and when do you feel the most hurt? Want me to go first? When she cry. <laughs> <laughs> when, when I she, cry, you when she, hurt? N no, when, when you start crying about something, I'm like, dang, what did I miss? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you feel like that's when you hear her, like, does, oh, this is serious. Like, oh, she's crying. Like, oh, she's yeah. Really when she, about yeah. Okay. I when I, if I see her crying, then I'm feeling like crap. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, dang, what the heck did I do? I don't want to make her feel that way. Yeah. yeah for sure. Okay. But you know, it, I feel like. <clears throat> It's important that we don't take for granted that men have feelings mm. because a lot of the time what we do as ladies is we find everything that's wrong with the relationship and we push it all on them. And for me, I feel like it's a two-way street. If we're disconnected, when we were connected at first, we connected for some odd reason, we got together, we got married, we did all those things. If there's a disconnect, then it's probably coming from both places. So for me, mm. if I feel like he is not hearing me, I'm an emotional person anyway. And so I feel like when I feel like he's not hearing me, I will take it to God first. Mm, that's good. I pray about it. I don't care what it is. It could be me. Once I was like, Lord, get, get he's yours. <laughs> he's yours. And Al is very big on saying God specifically created me for him. And I'm like, Lord, so if you made me for him, then I need to be his partner in this and I can't do that right now because he's not hearing me mm -hmm. so how do I say it to where he can understand it one I, I check my tone first of all men if you're mothering them they go into a headspace and this is maybe my own personal opinion but they go into a headspace where they're being way too submissive because you're mothering them mm -hmm. so I draw back from that Honey, we need to have a talk. No cell phones, no kids, no TVs, no nothing. We need to have a real conversation. And this may be hard for both of us, but I'm willing to hear you out. But I need you to for real hear what I'm about to tell you. Mm -hmm. And so when I communicate, like on the phone, you know, you call and text and doing all of that stuff all the time. But when there comes a point to where we really need to hear each other, I don't know outside influences at all. The only three things that are in that room is me, you, and God. Amen. That's it. And then when we have that conversation, if his response is not what I needed it to be, mm -hmm. guess what I'm going to do? Okay. I'm about to go right back to him because, Lord, he didn't understand anything I said and he didn't receive what I was telling him. <laughs> he took it the, all the way the wrong way. So what do I do? I back off of because I know him. I know this man. So I've said what I needed to say. I prayed about it first, said what I needed to say, back up off of him, take it to God, and give him time to process. Okay. If I give him time to process it, he'll be like, look, baby, actually, this is what I meant. And he does not want me to cry. So what he'll do sometimes, <laughs> and I had to tell him it drove me crazy, is he'll write this long <laughs> text message so I can read it and not be emotional in front of him. Because if I'm emotional in front of him, then he's just willing to give it to me as whatever. You know what I mean? So for me, first of all, communication is huge in our relationship. When I'm not being hurt. I was horrible at communicating. Yeah. At, at some yeah. part, <laughs> through the years, I've gotten better the past five, six years That's with awesome. communicating. I can so it took y'all a while to get in this place of good communication then. No, we, no. we always communicate. It's just that the way that I, re I receive like communication from her, it's and, changed. And yeah. it's like now I can sit down and have a conversation with her. And not despite, need so much processing uh, time. Yeah. Okay. yeah. In spite of her, uh, you know, she real emotional crying. If she real emotional crying, I got to stop the conversation because mm -hmm. I don't want to do nothing to make her cry more. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it, it took, like, it's with all men. It's, it's a lot of men. It takes some men 20, 30, 40 years to... Mm -hmm. Get good at communicating with their spouse. Do you know why I think so? Yeah, give me your, give me your. It's because <laughs> they, without knowing it, want to be mother. Oh, me. I don't want to be mother. Come on now, let me just say this. Let me just say this. I, I do have mother. something I want to say though. But without ahead, knowing ahead. it, mm -hmm. I feel like mm -hmm. they want to be mother, and they won't say it. 
they they definitely won't don't want to receive it, but you want me to do all of these things for you. Cook, clean, blah, 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 blah. That's the same thing. Hold on, babe. That's the same thing your mama did. That's the same thing your mama did. But if I didn't that with the kids all day, I'm not looking to mug you, bro. I need to just tell you what's bothering me and get it off my chest. But here's the problem when we do that, ladies. When we are exhausted and we like, I'm not finna mother you. I'm not finna mother you. When we're in that space and we're like, I'm not finna mother you. What happens is we we dump it. And it's we like throw it all on him. Look, I am tired. I need you to hear. He ain't hurt none of it. Mm-hmm. He ain't hurt none of it because he don't want you yelling and screaming and hollering at him. So before you do that, process, bring it in some, and then have the conversation. Because we do that. I'm guilty of it. I've done it my entire marriage. I've done it. And then had to go back and be like, look, can we just talk about this real quick? Because it, I, I'm sure I've hurt his feelings. Mm-hmm. And he ain't going to say, like I would say, you hurt my feelings when you said that. He was like, man, get on with that because I'm not trying to hear that. Yeah. And then I feel like even more hurt. Yep, yep. You know? There's so, no yeah. Yeah, we have to learn how to communicate effectively with our partners because they you want to be mothered a little bit. I, 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 oh. I, will, I will say, oh, to no. me, I will say women, I believe women speak an average of 15,000 words of that, I think average, and men is like five, those statistics might be a little outdated. So throughout the course of a day, while the man is at work, he done spoke 4,000 of those words already. Mm. So by the time we get home, she's like, how was your day, babe? What I'm trying to do is I'm trying not to talk as much at work so I can actually try to save it for home. Mm-hmm. Make an attempt to at least anyway. But sometimes yeah. my coworkers get to talking and stuff, so. But anyway. Well, then you do your YouTube channel, so you taking a, a few more words. That's true. Yeah, right? That's a whole, yeah. So, that's a whole conversation within <laughs> itself. Okay, so. It's funny, because I also, I used to, I think we had that conversation. I told him I felt like men like to be mother, because, you know, we've been talking about it in counseling, because, uh, you know, how I speak to him, and like, because I have to lower my tone like I do with the boys, and be, you know, friendly, where I'm like, I'm already overstimulated from having to, you know, be in a calm manner with these boys all day. It's like sometimes when I get to you, I'm just like, let's do what we have to do. <laughs> like, you know, but then I have to like, and so in my head, my counselor said it's not mothering because <laughs> I called it mothering too. I was like, he must be a mother him. I don't have time to do this. And she's like, no, it's not mothering. <laughs> it's being a good wife. And I'm like, uh. There's a big difference. We left our mother's house for a reason. <laughs> but, but it's like, I feel like we do so much like with cooking and cleaning and doing all this other kind of stuff it feels like you're mothering you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying and then i gotta make your doctor's appointments i have to make sure that your medication's refilled i gotta make sure that you're taking care of your health you feel like you're mothering someone else so i totally understand the mothering thing um because I, I feel like that a lot of times too like it's like oh i have to sit here and mother you yeah but, but you definitely want to make sure that you don't go into that headspace with him because then he's rejecting it because like you said they left their mother's house for a reason mm-hmm. so when we come to them the wrong way not that you can't be organic with your spouse but the same way you want to be talked to is the same way you need to talk to them mm-hmm. even though they're men and they got a, a tough exterior still you know i want respect so i need to respect you mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, and I think I think there are certain domains, that, and this is just my opinion. I think there are certain domains that we should be able to go into. That if you are, you know, setting a doctor's appointment, or if you are cooking, or if you are cleaning, I think if we kind of set those, we talk about communication, set those in stone about as far as what we're going to do. Expectations. Yeah, right. I think then that's kind of what we do because we train our spouses, right, and, not, and how to treat us. So I think if we. It's like, okay, I'm going to do this. I don't mind setting the doctor's appointments or I don't mind doing this just as long as it's something that we agree on. Mm-hmm. You know, that's just my two cents. Well, I'm going to set my doctor's appointment because she might forget. Mm-hmm. I'm going to definitely forget. <laughs> I'm going to forget my own doctor's appointment. So. I don't know why I got the call. Huh? Like, hey, you know you got a doctor's appointment tomorrow, right? So I, I like most of the stuff that has to be scheduled. Sometimes she'll send me... Um, She'll send me a list of everything that's got to be done. 
Mm -hmm. But I know so y'all, so y'all, each of y'all, right, each of y'all have your strong suits. Like, so Absolutely. you're better at making sure appointments get scheduled and yeah. then you're good at maybe cooking or cleaning or whatever mm -hmm. it is. So everybody has a strong suit. So, Absolutely. you know, you definitely thrive in whatever your strong suit yes. is. Yes. So that's, that's because where's the logic in, right, he has to be. Where's the logic in, where's the logic in me, like where's the logic in me straining myself to do that when it comes to him naturally? Yeah. Just like if he cooked for us every day, the only thing we would eat is barbecue and potatoes. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like, we went to see my son graduate um, from basic training. I had us at the wrong, the, at the airport at the wrong time. I scheduled our, I mean, made our reservation for our hotel in the wrong city. I, like, That's not your I'll tell everybody, I'm not, don't call me with the plans. Call him so he can tell you the plans or give him that information because he's good at that. Mm -hmm. Now, if it came to cleaning the house, what would take him two hours to do, I'm done within 10 minutes. <laughs> come on, wash like like right. <laughs> I'll come in and literally be like, oh, you've been cleaning all day? <laughs> you know? So, yeah, we definitely yeah, work no, with our... At, at least I try. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gotta get an even effort, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's oh, yeah, yeah. strong suits. I think that's important, just knowing your strong suits and even though it even if it doesn't look traditional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, well, he's better at doing this and you know, just you have to know what's gonna make your house run. That's true. Just because what might work for their house might not work for mine's or vice versa. You know, right. so you just yeah. gotta know your strong suits. How do you find out what they are? Trial and great error. Question. Good <laughs> great question. Trial and error. Mm -hmm. Trial and error or communicating. Mm -hmm. Trial and error communicating those expectations mm -hmm. to them and saying, I expect for you to, to set the do the itinerary because I'm not good at it. Well, and yeah, then how do you find out you're not good at it? That's what I'm saying. And then you, yeah, and if you're there, you're Especially y'all been together so long. Like when you're, when you're young, halfway like, across the. Like, when it's like, yeah, when you're in a whole different country, you're like, yeah. oh, I'm not so good at making an itinerary. You're you halfway across, you're across the country. Like, you don't know. Yeah. Sitting at the happen. desk like this, like. Dang, Who the do <laughs> <laughs> Now we ain't gonna have a room. <laughs> we in Mexico? I thought we was going to New Mexico. Yeah. No, yeah, our yeah. reservation was in California. <laughs> I mean, uh, what was it? L.A. And we were supposed to be in San Diego. No, it was in North oh, Virginia. Virginia. Yeah. And we were in L.A. Oh. And I know the people was looking at me like, what? Where, where they come from? Look, I I had no business doing it. Yeah, <laughs> but but it, it's just you know, it's just like me. I work on all of the cars we have. Okay, she clean. She'll tell me real quick. I'll clean this. You go work on that car because mm -hmm. I ain't finna work on no car. Yeah. I don't want to work on the car, and I don't. You know, she don't want to like, be clean. dirty and greasy. I did tell Sean like because we do set certain boundaries and we get in there. The expectation I said I don't do gas, I don't do trash, and I don't do grass. <laughs> I'm not Listen, I'm not oh, I got you. Really got the word I'm not that. cutting no grass. And no. earlier I was in the car and I said, Why is this guy saying I, I can't get, I, literally, I'm the, on the phone with my sister and I was like, I need to go to this store and go right back home because it's only 38 miles on this car. <laughs> and she was like, Okay, so put some gas in it. I said, I didn't get married to put gas in my car. <laughs> Because you're not married, mm. but I'm married, and my husband pumps my gas. So yeah, I, don't I like fill all the cars up on Monday. I don't okay. want to touch the Enjoy gas. I don't want to <laughs> take the garbage out. I will strategically stack the trash up <laughs> to keep from taking it out. Yep. And I'm not cutting nobody's grass. Oh, you ain't gonna cut my grass anyway. <laughs> <laughs> my grass cut a certain way. <laughs> I do my own yard work. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, because communication is another one that we need to talk about more often. I think that's a another show within itself. We're gonna have to definitely do some uh, some more stuff on that. Last question: How do you, uh, why do you think couples struggle in the area of finances? Because they're not on the same page. They for self. Mm. Expound on that. What do you what do you mean by they're for self? Because they have different ideas. Like she might want to go be an astronaut. Okay. But you got to go to school for X amount of years to be an astronaut. And you have to go through all of this training and stuff. Mm -hmm. 
I might not want to be nothing but a mechanic. Okay. So I'm struggling as a mechanic because I got to pay for her to go to astronaut school. <laughs> you know, it's stuff like that. Like you, you not on the the. You're not on the same page. Okay, so the communication again. Yeah, it's, it's all about communication because uh, statistically, I was telling Sean this earlier, statistically, most, it could have changed by now, but when I was in college, um, I took a statistics class, and most marriages fail from two things, religion, religion, and finances. Mm. Those are the biggest two that cause people, push people into divorce. Mm. It is Nobody wants to build with each other anymore. And that's the problem. It's, it's, a lot of people said I was a fool because Marie stayed at home with the kids and she could have put the kids in daycare and all that. We, like, you can't tell us nothing about that because we, we, Looked at everything. And we tried daycare. We 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 tried daycare. It didn't work and out. They, they cut my daughter's finger off. So yeah. no, not to the daycare. But it worked for us because I was able to work and take care of home. Like she didn't. My wife ain't never had to work. She worked because she wanted to work. I mean that that's that's what's wrong with most men now. It's got to be fifty fifty. Can I? Well, that's, that's a whole topic with the 50-50. Can I interject oh, yeah. real quick? Yeah, I think that gender roles play a huge part in why marriages have issues with finances mm. because generally, who's the breadwinner? The man. The man. So when those, those roles are reversed, then a woman gets to grab her, you know what I mean? She like with her chest out, like no... <laughs> sir, no, sir, you can't do that because I'm the one that's gonna have to pay for it. So then, how do you get on one? Of, there was once um, when we were young, Ali got fired from his job. I was working. I was working as a school teacher. I was the one that was bringing in the money. So he was trying to help out with the kids at the house. Like <laughs> the roles were reversed, though. Yeah, yeah. We struggled. Because that didn't work for us. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't appreciate me having to make my money. And here I am used to making money and spending it on me, mm -hmm. the kids, the, the little stuff in the house, doing whatever I want to do with it. But now all of a sudden, I got to take my money and do what? Pay a what? <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think that a person's gender sometimes actually affects things when it comes to finances. And the way that you rectify that is that you have that conversation and say, hey, but what is this going back to communication, right? But like, I could have went back to work. I just wanted to prove a point. <laughs> because she was talking, she was talking mess. I said, okay, well, I'm going to let you get out here and let you get it. But like how that. old were we? We was young, young and dumb. Young and silly. I we said, I'm going to let you, I'm going to let 20s. you be out there. And, and yeah, it, it wasn't, it was never going to work that way for us because I had already been accustomed to a certain life. Yes. And, and then he called me spoiled. <laughs> and when he called me spoiled, I was like, oh, oh it's go time. It. It's go yeah. time. I, do this. It's go time. I, do this. Yes. I got it. But the, the reality is, I didn't want to have to, like, even when he started his business. When you start a new business, you are going to experience some hurdles. Mm -hmm. There was one time I actually Jesus. had to, I got paid and I had to pay one of his workers. Mm -hmm. So not only did he not profit from the job, but again, that's because he was brand new. He didn't know what he was doing mm -hmm. with the business. Mm -hmm. I didn't, he didn't profit from the job. As a matter of fact, I didn't get paid. Now we got to pay your worker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, Literally, God worked on me hard with that because I was all the time in his ear. You need to go back to the oil. He was working in the oil field prior to oh, him so starting the job. Money. So he was making money. Yeah. So I'm like, you need to go back to the oil field. Yeah. 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 And God checked me. Mm -hmm. And he was like, well, shut it. Mm -hmm. Because first of all, that's not your child. Mm -hmm. He's mine. Mm -hmm. So let me work on him. And I can't do what I need to do in him because you won't be quiet. Mm. You won't shut up. Like, mm. be quiet. So for almost a month, literally a month, well, it was probably exactly a month, instead of me saying things, I think we talked about this before, but instead of me saying things, I was, y'all, biting my lips, biting my tongue, biting my everything, trying to 
shut my mouth so that God can work on him. And so he would say something and I'd be thinking to myself, Lord, you don't want me to say nothing, but this don't make no sense. <laughs> and then literally, because I didn't say anything, because I was obedient, mm. he would come back to me. He was like, you know what? I thought about it a little bit. And actually, maybe I need to do it like this instead of that. And I was like, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> but if I said that's it to him, him come to it yeah, if I like, said I it to him, him, he wouldn't have received it. So, could, so And what happened so, the next day? Yeah. I got a fifty thousand dollar job. Yeah, <laughs> but I needed to. We wouldn't have seen any of that success right. if I had just kept on. That's good. I would have walked away from it, been been back on the road, away from mm -hmm. home, which somebody told me I need to get off the road and get home. Yeah, until and I had to pay I, that work. <laughs> <laughs> so are you saying that you you can huh. actually block the will of God by talking? Talking. Over God, so God can't get to him. Absolutely. Oh yeah, my, it, it, my mama used to tell me that's you run your mouth too much sometimes. This right here will get you in trouble. And then it, it, the, the crazy thing is that when you do that, mm -hmm. you're not just affecting him; you are affecting everybody in your household that's because crazy. he can't do what he needs to do. God can't work on him. Imagine if you were trying to discipline one of your kids. And then you got some outside source. Every time you go to discipline them, mm, they... Not, oh, I can't stand that. Oh, my. But oh. that's what it is for us with God. Mm. Mm. So God can be trying to work on us, and you possibly can have a spouse that's like, no, God, I got this. Mm -hmm. Trying to take over. Trying to take over. Trying to... That's that's that right. But you blocking what God got for you, yeah, and it's for you God. Work, and it's, it's, yeah. yeah, it's a it's a lesson in all of this. The reason that. God is letting everything start out like this because mm -hmm. it's a bigger picture yeah. than what than what we can see. Because mm -hmm. from that day up until now, business has been kind of booming. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, honestly, I feel like if I had not been obedient, mm -hmm. then first of all, I would have pushed my husband into a position that he did not and should not have been in. One, that would not have just affected me. If he had went back on the road, it would have affected our children, too. And our youngest one had youngest kid syndrome, and he needed his daddy at the house with him. Okay. okay? But not just that. When God allowed, when the Holy Spirit spoke to me and allowed me to remove that silencer off my mouth, I didn't have anything to say. He had worked it out so much that I was comfortable and confident enough in him mm -hmm. to allow him to make those decisions. Mm -hmm. Baby, I think I need to go ahead and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, okay, well, when we riding? Mm -hmm. Hey, some workers is off here and they doing this. All right, so let me put my pants on. Let me put my paint shirt on. And then I'm going over here and I'm going to paint with you. Like, we ride mm -hmm. it that. We're going to do this together. But I couldn't have an appreciation for it at first because all I see is the negative stuff. And the enemy is like, you need to talk to that. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? You're looking through carnal eyes Absolutely. as opposed to the spirit. Mm. Mm hmm. Wow. That's yeah. good. That's real good. That's a whole, yeah. That's a whole Instagram. <laughs> We're going to put that, yeah, that's an Instagram. Video. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Because I think a lot of times when we leave out the spiritual piece of our marriages, and there's so many scriptures where uh, the scriptures talk about how uh, uh, you won't hear from God because you're not. Loving your spouse effectively, or I right. think it's First Peter. I can't think off the top of my head, but it's like God won't hear you because a lot of times God is really God. interested into, and He's interested in our vert our uh, horizontal relationships, you know, because it's important for. In order to get the vertical, you gotta have that that uh, horizontal. You know what I'm saying? Because God is really interested in the way we treat each other. Absolutely, and He's I love interested. that you referenced that yeah. because actually. Oh, yeah. That I think that is Peter, where Peter. like I read that and I was like, Look, you better be careful. Yeah. What did I start saying? I, I start telling you, you better be careful yeah. what you do to me because God don't play. He said it. He was That's like, right. God don't play about you. I said, He definitely don't play about me. Hey. He gave you specific things to do. Mm -hmm. Just like He gave me, He gave you specific things yeah. to do. And you are supposed to do those things. And if you don't, guess, guess who we're going to turn yeah. to? Because yeah. when it's all said and done, when we get ready to go up there, He's going to say, Sean, Al, I blessed y'all with this family. What did you do with them? Yep. What did you teach them? Because you need to be preaching to them first. 
Finding outside sources do. You need to be guiding them. You need to be leading by example. So what did you do with the family I gave you? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Because there's even a scripture, and I don't want to take out of context, where he talks about, where Jesus talks about before you uh, put your gift on the altar to make sure that you reconcile with your brother. Mm -hmm. yeah. That whole thing, you know what I'm saying? So I, and I might have butchered the text a little bit. <laughs> no, you know, don't put it we in, know the, where in, you're in going. detail. <laughs> yeah, you already know. If you're a believer, you get what I'm saying. But I think that is important that uh, we work on this relationship. Because yeah. God can be glorified through us. Amen. Absolutely. Yeah, because God tells you to treat your wife like He treats the church. Mm -hmm. He said, "Love your wife." Love your wife. Same. Like you get what I'm saying? No, no, no. Love your wife like love you wife. like I love the church. Mm -hmm. And that's a heavy. That's a. That's heavy. That's a heavy scripture that a lot of people in marriage don't look at. Then they wonder why. Like, y'all got all this combativeness going on with each other. And bickering. But yeah. you wonder why you at work going through hell, and then he at work going through hell. Then you come home and you're going through hell because you're not doing what God told you to do in marriage. Mm -hmm. So now you got hell going on everywhere. You're looking crazy. And that's no but peace. this is why. There's is no in-between with God. It's either... It's either you doing what God instructed you to do as a husband, as a wife, or you're not doing it at all because he's not going to bless none of that. You read the hot or cold, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And what does God tell mind. a woman to do and mm -hmm. as far as her relationship is concerned? Mm -hmm. uh, well, that that oh. especially. Mm -hmm. but that, I don't think all women are Proverbs 31. Let's mm -hmm. just start with that. But, Some but of them are Proverbs got, 32. He, he got one. He got one right here. But, <laughs> The Bible tells a woman to respect her husband. The Bible tells a woman, <laughs> the Bible tells a woman to respect her husband. And it says, hold on, honey, real quick. And it says that a man, a man needs to love his wife. How many times in the scripture does it say that a woman is supposed to love her husband? It doesn't. You know why? There's a very specific kind of respect mm -hmm. that comes from a woman to a husband. I respect this. I respect this. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all say that word a lot. I'm trying to correct that. But I respect this man differently than I could ever respect anybody else. And it's because he loves me so much. So the way that I show my love for him is through respect to him. That's good. And I have a certain level of respect. I'm not going to talk to him like I talk to some other random person on the street. I'm not going to talk to him. I can't do that because I have a certain level of respect because he loves me so much. And he is intentional. He is intentional about showing his love for me. And so I'm intentional about showing him how, how much I respect him. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean being submissive and yes, anything he said. Yeah. Although I was being facetious and like, yeah. You know, but yeah, yeah. yesterday. Yeah, yesterday I kept talking about, sure, sir, your highness, would, you know, being funny. <laughs> but the reality is, the Bible says a woman is supposed to respect her husband. And I don't believe it's the same kind of respect that you give your employer. I don't believe it's, believe it's the same kind of respect that you give your mama, your daddy. It's a whole nother level. And when you do that, when you can make him feel that respect, then he feels accomplished. And guess what he going to do when you show him that kind of respect? He going to love you even harder. And when he loves you even harder, you're going to respect him even more. And when you respect him even more, he's going to love you even harder. And that kind of respect... You can't show that kind of respect to somebody you don't love. That's right. You have to have a certain love for them. But I think that it's a man's responsibility to make sure he nurtures that and pulls mm -hmm. that out of you. Yeah. And once you get her there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. she'll do anything. Well, like, I'll do anything. Whoop, there <laughs> <laughs> Doors of the church is open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean you're, supposed to, you're supposed to have... Uh, a general, uh, at least a general idea how to how marriage is supposed to work between the love and respect thing, mm -hmm. and sometimes some some women, vice versa, men, like they just tear each other down. Yep. But you've been together all these years for what? You you tear when you tear each other down, he is no good to you. Mm -hmm. You're no good to him. Like, it's, it's never going to work. Yep. The only way it's going to work if one of y'all pass. Then you crying, mm -hmm. talking about the shoulda, coulda, would. Mm -hmm. it's, now is the time to to um, make your relationship go thrusted forward. Mm -hmm. 
you have to figure out a way to get it into the motion that it needs to be in with the things that God wants you to do for each other. Like a lot of people, like she was saying, people was talking, was saying like, Bent, what is it, being submissive mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I, I, I ignore a lot of that stupid stuff <laughs> to me because I'm not going to, I'm just not a person that me and Sean was talking about it earlier a little bit. I'm like, I look at a lot of things, but I don't pay a, a, um, attention to a lot of it because not because it's not one, because it's not conducive to my situation. Mm -hmm. Um, that's a that's the first thing. The second thing is people just make up stuff, and then people look at all this crazy stuff and start reexamining their house on the wheel. You got a wheel at the house, and you got to check all of these items to make sure that you hit all these items. Because people will project. Yeah. You can't allow people to project. People will have a crazy situation, and you be looking at their situation, going, "I could never deal with that." But then they want to turn around and give Say you that. advice. Say that. Um, Stop I, letting people who are not in healthy marriages tell you how to do your marriage. If you can look then at you their, go, Then you go home and you start fat checking your house. Mm -hmm. And there don't be nothing wrong at your house. Because they're projecting. We always got to fine tune. Like we, we have discussions all the time. We, we learn, I learned how to be a better communicator with her. But it wasn't that I didn't like her or because I didn't love her or anything like like that. It's because I because sometimes I say the wrong thing. Like I, I haven't thought about it, just come out and then I heard her feeling now she's crying. Now I'm feeling like <laughs> shit. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> because, <laughs> because I done made her cry. Mm -hmm. But but it's it's the vision of the world. It's not the vision of your house. Mm -hmm. It's the vision of what the world see. Marriage should be, and marriage is nothing like they doing, like no. like they talking about. Like, if a woman is cooking and cleaning and staying at home, people in this damn time frown on that. Mm -hmm. You you don't. That's why I say you don't want a marriage. You want a business partnership. Mm -hmm. So when it goes bad, you walk away with what you got came in with. She walk away with what she came in with. Like, it, it's, it's stupid to me. And I tell Marie, like, some of this stuff is just stupid to me. It don't make any sense because none of it is organic. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm with her because we built this. Mm -hmm. Nobody gave it to us. Well, God built it. Mm -hmm. Nobody gave it to us. We learned this off the fly. So, we made it work. I, I have a question about the submission thing. And I know you probably I, know, but I just <laughs> when it comes to being submissive, I think that when all of those things are in line and you start working on thing after thing, and don't just skip all over the place. When you've worked on your communication and you get in a good comfortable spot, and so now let's work on the intimacy and you get in a good comfortable spot. So now we got intimacy and communication down pat. Then you add those other things in there. I think that that's good. But as far as being submissive, I think that people should know that women, and I'm speaking no, for all of us, women <laughs> want to be a certain level of submissive because I want to be able to trust that you can handle that. And so I want to follow you, but I can't follow you if I can't follow you. Like if you keep messing it up, I, I can't follow you. So women want to be submissive. I want to be able to say, babes, you take care of it and then just tell me what I need to do yeah. so I can do my part. Yeah. But being submissive, oh, I'm sorry, what were you going to say? No, no, you're okay. okay. go ahead. Being That's submissive does not mean that I'm his lap dog. Being right. submissive does not, does not mean he come in the house and he mm -hmm. right here. What does that mean? I because would never he's a, disrespect. He's a general contractor, right? Mm -hmm. If we look at it from that perspective. Mm -hmm. So he general contracts the job. So he works directly with the customers. Mm -hmm. Underneath him, he got a bunch of subcontractors. Mm -hmm. He has to trust those subcontractors to be able to do the job, right? If you're a subcontractor and I can't trust you, then this relationship won't work. Mm -hmm. If you're a general contractor and I'm your subcontractor and I can't trust you, then it's not going to work. So I don't need you to, to demand certain things from me and to tell me, put me in a box so that I, I can only be like one of these animals that we got running around here. What I need from you <laughs> is 
good leadership mm -hmm. so that I can put myself in a position of want to follow you. And that falls back into that respect, which falls back into expectations, which falls back into communication. Mm -hmm. I yeah, because in the beginning, um, I want to want to follow me. <laughs> well, ain't no telling what crazy mess. I was still in the streets a little bit. I'm ready to do the wrong thing. <laughs> well, let, let me let me ask the wise real quick as we get ready to close okay. for for uh, the single folks. And of course, we want to get your information at the end to make sure that you know everybody can connect with you. <laughs> for the wives, uh, for the single ladies. How do you know, speak to the single ladies, how do you know what makes a good leader while in the dating stage? Like, how do you know he's going to be a good leader? You go for it. Oh, you want me to go? Because oh. <laughs> <laughs> single folks, you know, they, I we do. talk about this a lot. We do. And mm -hmm. I, I, for me, mm -hmm. I think um, knowing that a man is going to be a good leader is knowing his follow through. Um, if you can tell early on in the stages of y'all's in the beginning of your relationships that, you know, he's not, he does not have good follow through and that he doesn't keep his commitments or he's always, he starts something and not finishing it to completion and stuff like that. To me, you're not going to be a good leader in my household. You know what I'm saying? And I, it actually makes me nervous. <laughs> <being around that. laughs> I'm like, Ugh, is he going to get, because I don't always get stuff done <laughs> in a timely manner. It gets done eventually, but it takes my, take my time. So I'm like, we both not getting it done. I'm just like, oh, <laughs> you know. Mm, so would you say, as a, so would you use that as saying like, say if you're on a date, maybe it's like, can you tell me what was the last thing that you completed? Maybe something that you uh, What's finished? the last book you read? Or, you know what I'm saying? You just, because, you know, I have about five books that I've started and haven't finished. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But it's like, when's the last time you finished it? Or, and not saying that this is like the end all be all right, or anything. But like, I feel like there are little questions that you can ask a person um, that will kind of tell you like what you need to know about them. Mm -hmm. To me, yeah. So that's, that's one of mine. But what are you saying? So... I have not been single for an extremely long time. However, I have a lot of single friends and they mm -hmm. tell me these stories and they, they have these experiences and stuff like that. And for me, first of all, can I trust that I can follow you? Mm -hmm. Like if you take me out on a date and I don't care where we went, I saw this list where a bunch of women was saying, oh don't take God. me to cheesecake factory. First of all, I've been with this guy for almost 25 years and I love the cheesecake factory. <laughs> but, um, but um, like literally if you take, I don't care where we're going, but if you take me on a date and you can't, Protect me. If you take me on a date and we go to the hood, <laughs> and this is what you comfortable with the first time you took me out, maybe a little bit of a red flag. I don't care about the restaurant, and it could be your spot, but if you take me to a date on the hood, and you got a little protection, you know some of the people that's around you, then I'm comfortable. Then I'm like, you know what? I, I don't care that we in the hood. You know what you're doing. Exactly. You know what you're doing. But if you take me in the hood and you like, look, we get in here, don't talk to me like Or if you sit with your back to the door and I'm sitting here looking at you like, Oh, and I, look, I don't do that. Like, I have to be able to see. You can see, yeah. I, I no. grew up on the south side of Chicago. Yeah. I, I know those things. Like, but you don't know, like, the... the, the some, some street smart. Yeah, yeah like, but if you take me somewhere and you are putting both of our lives in jeopardy, <laughs> I can't follow you. If I have a conversation with you and I, after our first conversation, we hang up and you like send me a picture and I send you a little cute picture and you send me a picture of... <sighs> That's the worst. Yeah. Wow. You ain't going into it for the right reason. Yeah. And, uh, it's merely <laughs> sexual for you and then I can't follow you because we can't grow from that. Mm -hmm. If I tell you, hey... I had fun with you Friday. Um, can't stay out Saturday because I got to go to church. And you say, oh, no, forget that church. Yeah, I can't follow you. I can't follow you. So yeah, I think yeah. that for these single ladies, and let me just say this, and I'm going to offend somebody real I'm quick. I'm going to church with you. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to offend somebody real quick. I'm going to offend somebody real quick. Go ahead. Let's go. So Let's go for the people the these people. ladies, let's, let's, let's just keep it above. Okay, I've seen these ladies. And they're like, he needs to have a car, he needs to have a house, he needs to have one credit, he needs to be making this, he needs to be doing that, he needs to be doing that. Blah, 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 blah. I need all these things, but then they show up on a date and they're wearing chins. Let me just say that. Let me just say that. 
There is nothing wrong with if you get your clothes from Shein and you looking real cute. But have reasonable expectations. You want a man to come to the table with everything and the only thing you got is a worn out hot box because you've been sharing it all over the place all with your Shein outfit. And food stamps. Come on. And, and hey, I, I don't have a problem with... Look, I don't have a problem with somebody get. Hold on, honey. I don't have a problem with somebody getting financial assistance if they need that. There's nothing wrong with that. But... You got all of these high expectations. You ain't even got a car yourself, but a guy got to have all of these things glistening, and glamour and presented to you. And then the only thing you don't cook, <laughs> you don't clean, you know how to do a one or two signature moves that FYI signature. may not even be his signature. He might not even like that signature. Yeah, right, yeah. You got all of these things that you want him to bring to the table. And ladies, let's be honest, we ain't bringing the right thing. Mm. So I, I think that for the ladies, it's important that you make sure you find you a leader, find you a man, not a little boy. Mm -hmm. But make sure that when you get to the place where you want him to be a leader and you want him to be a man, you're able to reciprocate. Mm -hmm. You're a grown woman and you're not acting like a little girl. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You'll spend three, four hundred dollars on your weave, but you got an air mattress in your bedroom. Like, <laughs> am I wrong? Am I wrong? Like, I really feel like we have to grow up and excel beyond that because we want leaders, we want kings, we want strong mm -hmm. men, and we are lackluster in everything that it is that Ooh, we bring to the lackluster so. child. Mm -hmm. Flesh my <laughs> I'm first day when I seen that list. I was like, our first day was McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were, we were teenagers, yeah, but still. Yeah, still, yeah, still yeah, I yeah, took yeah. you to McDonald's. Yeah, and he ate my food. And I ate them. Because I was too shy to eat it in front of him. He's like, oh, you don't want to die. You just ate my whole burger. Hey. I had to go home and get something to eat. <laughs> At least I walked you home so you can get something to eat. He did. He walked me home. And I stayed there he, with you. As soon as he sat on the porch, I went in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, this has been a phenomenal yes. episode. Oh, man. Let everyone know how they can get in touch with you. So we are starting back up our little Alan Sugar show. We are on Facebook. Uh, we started a TikTok, which when we did the little Alan Sugar show at first, TikTok wasn't popping. Okay. But TikTok now, Instagram. Um, We go live Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, we're excited so about it. Yeah, oh, we're going to be talking God. about a bunch of stuff. Yes. Oh, my God. Well, you heard it here first, Bravehearts community. This has been a phenomenal episode. <laughs> make sure <laughs> everything will be linked up in the description below to make sure that you get in touch with everyone. Thank you all once again. Thank you to my wonderful co-host, mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Heineman, for taking some time out of her <laughs> <laughs> busy day today. <laughs> If you are listening to this via podcast, make sure you hit the uh, subscribe button. Make sure that you leave a rating and review. Uh, by doing so, it could put you in a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. You know, oh, I need to that, give me that, that info. You know, we could do a free Amazon gift card giveaway. If you are watching this via YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you uh, comment below. We'd love to uh, hear what you have to say about today's episode. Make sure you share this video with someone. You never know. I realize you get a lot of views. When you're in the group chats, send it to your friends in the group chats. Send it to all your girlfriends and stuff like that, and your, and your, and your guy friends who got a uh, guy group chat. So, anyway, thanks again, Brave Hearts community. Take care. Bye. Hey, thanks again for watching another segment of A Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarry, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here, but anyway, go watch another video.